What is up, everybody? This is the day after Christmas, 2021. I hope everybody had a blessed one and I hope you all were treated very well by Santa Claus if you deserved it, as long as you weren't on the naughty list. I just want to go in here and wrap with you today about never being afraid to be yourself. Um, when I was getting started out in business and um, even this YouTube channel, people said things and done things to try to discourage me, but I never let it phase me. Well, I shouldn't say I never let it phase me. I ain't gonna lie. I had my moments of doubt as well. I never thought that people, just being 100 with you, honest as I can be, I never thought that people would take interest in something I had going on or have a, or believe in me enough to buy a product from me, if that makes any sense. I didn't have the, um, the confidence. And truth be told, I don't think anybody has that kind of confidence. I've always had confidence, but not that much confidence. I never had it. In the past, I didn't have enough confidence to put my logo on a shirt and presume that someone else would show enough interest to buy it. So with all that being said, the message from this video is never be afraid to be yourself. Unfortunately, being yourself is difficult this day and age you got so many haters and naysayers and just negative people that if they see you being positive and trying to do something to progress there's so many people out there that want to hold you down hold you back they want to reach up if they see you climbing they want to grab your ankles and and pull you down to their level and i personally don't understand that because they're not going to gain any monetary value from that maybe it's some kind of street cred they think they're getting or bragging rights but at the end of the day they're not progressing you're not progressing and if somebody from your neighborhood was to make it they may be able to reach back and help you one day so why not want to see someone from your community make it but there's so many people that don't it's really amazing to me so let's take youtube for example since that's part of the title of this video how i got monetized in less than four months technically I got, it took me about eight months to get monetized, but the first five months or so, I didn't even do anything. My channel, I made some videos here and there very sporadically, but I wasn't really, I, was, I wasn't really trying. I didn't know how to try. I didn't know what to do or how to um, gather a following, I guess you would say. I didn't know how to get subscribers. And it didn't, it only clicked with about three, three and a half months ago, what I needed to do. I honestly didn't put a lot of focus into it those first five months. That's why I really don't count those. On paper, they're gonna count when you see my anesthetic, how do you say that word? <laughs> um, when you see my um, my graph, if I, when I show that eventually in a future video, when you, you see my progression on my chart, it was just a straight line. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, when you have a YouTube channel, you have a chart or graph that shows you how many subscribers you have and how many, uh, everything, it grades everything. Mine, and it looks like a heartbeat line, and mine was like straight, and then, like I say, about three months ago, I, I started seeing progression, and now my chart is steady going up, so I'm getting more and more subscribers every day and more and more views. And, but all that being said, the way I started getting subscribers and views, because with subscribers generally comes views, even though you don't need subscribers to get views. But the way I started getting more subscribers was through or from Facebook. A lot of people I know or, or know of, as far as um, influencers or YouTubers, use um, Instagram. I personally don't know nothing about Instagram. I wish I did know about Instagram because it seems to be a very lucrative platform, especially for influencers or YouTubers, whatever you want to call us. But I just never could figure it out. And if I don't understand something, it's just like an investment. If I don't understand an investment, I don't invest in it because I don't, you know, I've tried the YouTube thing, but it just, I just, it just ain't clicking for me, unfortunately. But Facebook, on the other hand, I do know how to work Facebook and um i the main way i 
got subscribers from Facebook was I created a page, a Facebook page about three and a half months ago, maybe three months ago, I created a Facebook page that is Barry Elam Jr. The same name as my YouTube channel. And with that page, I was able to share my videos to that page. And obviously if someone is following the Barry Elam Jr. page, they're already have showed some interest into my brand. They obviously don't dislike me. They, they either follow me or my family or something like that through Facebook already. So they already have some interest in me. And then when I share my videos, of course, they're going to watch them and they're going to through watching them. Of course, I'm going to get views. And for those of you who don't know how YouTube works, the way you get paid is not through necessarily your views per se. It's your, um, your, the, the amount of ads people watch. You have ads that come up on your video and if the people that's watching your video click on those ads or watch those ads that's how you get paid it's not about if you get a thousand views or ten thousand views that don't even matter you may you're not gonna make no money really the only way you're gonna make money is if the people actually watch those ads the ones that come up where it says you can skip this ad or people actually watch those or click on those and go actually visit the websites or whatever that's how you get paid you get paid through the advertisers not really youtube you get paid through from google basically write your check but the advertiser pays google and then google pays you you're you're getting paid by a company called google adsense and you have to set up a totally different account and link it to youtube i'll show all that i'll share all that in the future youtube video or something but nevertheless that's how it works so you got to get at least some youtube ask that you get a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours before they will monetize you and monetize means they're going to then start paying you to make videos if people watch the advertisements on your videos that's the main thing you got to know people have got to watch the advertisements it don't matter how many views you get it matters how many people click on the advertisements in your videos all right so hopefully i got that across there's a lot of people don't catch that, but either way, that's what I done. I got the, I started the Facebook page. People joined it. I think I got like 3000 something people have joined it so far. So that's over a thousand a month, somewhere around a thousand a month. What I got going on. And out of those 3000 something over a thousand have subscribed to my YouTube channel, which is why I just recently got monetized. And thank you all for doing that. So with all that being said, to me, it all it took three and a half months. Once that happened, once it clicked to me, hmm, I have a Facebook following because I already have this shirt company called Tactical Advantage and it has over 13,000 uh, followers on it. So I was like, people are that interested in what I'm doing. Maybe I should use Facebook to help me get my YouTube going because YouTube actually pays. Facebook don't pay me. I have heard there's ways you can get paid through Facebook, but once again, I don't know how that works and I'm not really interested in that. Uh, YouTube, to me, in my opinion, reaches a broader audience. There's just more people watching YouTube than there is on Facebook at any given moment. And, um, and I feel like YouTube's going to take the place of cable TV in the future. It's going to take a long time, but evidence shows it's hard to do in that. So, YouTube being the future of TV, in my opinion, that's where everybody's going to go to watch their content and stuff like that. I'm trying to get on the YouTube bandwagon as early as possible. I wish I'd have done it sooner. But once I figured out you could make money by making videos about yourself or your lifestyle or giving some type of value to people, that's when I became interested in having a YouTube channel. And like I say, once I got Facebook involved, I made my Facebook account. And people started joining like they have been and now monetized um, um that's that's when it all clicked that, it was really just that simple get your facebook page built up you might have to put some good content out there i think my facebook page started out just like my youtube page i started out with workout videos and showing people how to eat good and take care of your body take care of your mind and stuff of that nature same thing my channel's about but everybody once they people start following that and then they say oh there's videos but in order to watch the video 
you gotta click on the YouTube link and it takes you straight to YouTube. And you can't just post your video on Facebook and think you're gonna get a view. You have to have the link. You have to share your link from YouTube to your Facebook page. That's really the hardest part of it all and it's not hard at all. It's, that's very simple. Copy and paste. Copy your link from YouTube, paste it to Facebook. Once you paste it to your Facebook page, you can then share it to your personal Facebook page and share it to other pages, whatever other pages you're a part of that allows you to sh uh, share. As long as the admin don't have some kind of rule that you're not allowed to share stuff, you can share it to whatever, whoever, and that just so many more people have the opportunity to see your content. The more people you put your content in front of, the more people are gonna watch it. That's just a numbers game. It's common sense. It's just the way the world works. It's all about numbers. Now, with all that being said, don't think you're gonna get rich or even be able to support your lifestyle, especially starting out as a YouTuber. You're going, it's gonna take a long time to for like, YouTube's aneurysm to, or agorism, how have you said that word? It's gonna take a long time to realize what your channel's about, who you are, and what kind of category to place you in, and things of that nature, so that you can get put on the main YouTube page, so more and more people will be able to see your content without you having to push it so hard once you make it to the main youtube page it's all gravy that's where you got your guys like mr beast and all these other people uh calling in samar all these influencers they're they're that's what they get that's where they get their push from that's why they're rich now once youtube put them on their main page when they saw that people were really watching their videos and watching the advertisements that's when youtube decided okay we're gonna go ahead and push these people because they're making us more money so it's all numbers game it's all boils down to money as always but that's that's the nature of the beast you, you got to know that you got to bring some value to youtube before youtube's gonna share the value with you it's just you can't blame them it is what it is and you gotta make decent content i mean you can't you gotta make some kind of content I, or at least i'll say that I'm, i've seen people that don't make their content is just like oh they wake up in the morning and sit there and talk about nothing Maybe drink some milk and then be like, oh, what are we going to do today? And just sit around and do absolutely nothing. Those, Tom Reed, there's people with millions of followers that do that. I don't understand it, but there, there just is. I don't, I don't get that. But from what I can tell, for the most part, you have to be, I don't know, genuinely lucky. I don't know how people get uh, followers to watch them do nothing all day. But in my opinion, you got to bring some type of value to you, the, the people that's watching these channels and like i say you're not gonna make a lot of money doing this as far as youtube goes but you can use youtube as your platform to make money to sell your merchandise and to get um advertisements from big companies like say johnson say you have a, a channel about skincare and johnson and johnson has a skincare product they may reach out to you once they see you got so many subscribers and be like, hey, we'll pay you a thousand dollars if you'll make a video. And in the video, just mention Johnson and Johnson for like thirty, about a minute of that video to give us an advertisement in the, in the video. And that's how it works. That's how you get big advertisements, big advertisers to back you up. And before you know it, they're paying for your video. They give you a thousand bucks, and they're giving you free products. You end up getting free Johnson and Johnson products shipped to your house all the time. And that's really where the big influencers come up from. They sell their merchandise. They get uh, big backers to back them once they see you got a lot of people following you. And from that point on, the sky's the limit. So that's how I got monetized though. I set up a Facebook account and I shared my YouTube content to my Facebook account. And then I shared, once I got on my Facebook account, I shared it to all the other Facebook accounts that I thought would uh, be okay with that. I personally have a few. I have my shirt company, Tactical Advantage, and I have Bear Wolf Apparel. So I can share it to all those, and they all have thousands of followers. And sometimes other people share it to other people. They share it on their personal page, and it just it keeps going. I mean, it's, it, 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 you can as good as you're, if you have really good content, you may get a thousand people to share it for you, and you don't have to do nothing. This thing you know, you got a thousand views on the video. So, or a million. But like I said, no matter how many views you got, you need ad clicks. But 
in the same token, the amount of views you got is going to give you a greater chance of getting more ad clicks. So you want views and you want subscribers because the subscribers are more than likely going to see every video you post if they get on Facebook or I'm sorry, if they get on YouTube enough. But it don't matter. You can still have a thousand subscribers and the whole world still has a chance to see your video if you make great, good content. If you make good content, everybody's going to be clicking on it. And the more people that click on it, YouTube's going to push it more until they may push it to the main page. And then you got a billion people can see your content. And if you get a million subscribers, you're going to get a good check from YouTube. I mean, if you get a million views, because I have a million views, you're probably going to get at least 200,000 ad clicks. And that, that equals up to a lot of change. But also, everybody don't get paid the same. I really don't understand or know how YouTube decides what to pay people, but everybody gets paid differently. You can have somebody making a video about dog foods and stuff like that, and they may get paid $2 for every ad click. Or you can have somebody with a channel like mine that's about motivation, and you may I may only get $1.50 per ad click. I'm just using that as an example. But nevertheless, everybody's different. And you won't know yours until you really get on there and get when you once you get monetized it'll show you uh, as a page called your revenue page i think is what it's called you get on there and it'll show you what you make per ad click and stuff of that nature but that's pretty much the gist of it on how you get monetized on youtube uh, but the main thing i want to talk to y'all about though is kind of a kind of mixing it up in this video but i really this was really on my mind i really wanted to get on here and, and speak on it <clears throat> never be afraid to be yourself ever um, I couldn't do this because right now I'm literally looking at a cell phone sitting in a car by myself and making this video but I gotta tell you man if I never would have decided to be myself I wouldn't be sitting in this Mercedes GL 450 I would have never imagined I'd have a car like this as a matter of fact my brother he's very well he's well off compared to most people he's a uh, he's actually a, a corporate member of Johnson & Johnson and last time I seen him in person, I think it was two years ago, we were sitting down eating at a restaurant and he was telling me when he come, whenever he made it back to the States, cause he lives in, I think in Singapore right now. Yeah, that's where he's at now, Singapore. He moves around a lot for his company, but he was telling me that whenever he moved back to the States, he planned on getting a vehicle cause where he's at now, he gets chauffeured around cause he's in different countries they don't really know the roads they have to have people drive him around things of that nature but he was telling me when he gets back he wanted to get him a mercedes suv i think he was talking about like a g63 i can't remember exactly what kind he wanted i remember it's one of the high-end suv mercedes and i was thinking wow that's classy you know at the time i think i was driving a car he had basically uh given me was an infinity car g25 or something a small car um, or I might not even had a car. I think I had a car that broke down at the moment and he was we were transitioning and he was going to give me his old car because he couldn't drive it where he was going. So, he was, and I was like, man, well, that's cool. And my dream at the time, I said, was just to get an Infiniti SUV, a GX, I think. I can't remember. I think they call it LX. I don't even remember anymore because it's not important anymore because after that conversation, I ended up starting my car a lot and things picked up uh started the shirt company things picked up some more and lo and behold next thing i know i went i got my dream i, I came up with a new dream car because my my dreams got bigger and i forgot i said the heck with that infinity suv they're, they're nice and all but i dreamed bigger i wanted a uh, bmw x6 m class and i got it i went and paid cash what drove to south carolina and picked it up one day and I, I, I pay out 20 I got a good deal on it I, I'll tell you that I ain't gonna tell how much I paid for it but I got a great deal on it and drove it back home and came back and basically sold it for what I had in it after I drove it for about a year and the only reason I sold it is because it started it had some kind of coolant problem all of a sudden and I could have fixed it and still be driving it but I've always been told when it's BMW you start getting coolant problems it's time to let them go and plus the miles were just starting to get up there a little bit. And BMW is just not a car that you want to see miles accumulate on. I just sold it while I still was holding its value, basically. And 
I told the guy what the problem was with it, everything else, and he's still driving it. it. I think he may have fixed it or whatever, but he's still driving it. I just seen him another day driving it. But anyway, so that happened. And then once I bought that car, I ended up buying my old lady, the car I'm sitting in now, the Mercedes GL 450. And then she's seen something else she wanted. So I bought her that, and she gave me this. I also, in part besides my, um, it's a 07, but it's a Cadillac EXT truck which I've always wanted. I've always wanted one of those from back in the day. Um, I've actually seen one recently and I couldn't afford it. Well, not recently, it's been about six or seven months ago. I couldn't afford it, but um, saved up, saved up. And then this one come along and got a great deal. I saved $10,000 waiting on this one, the black one beside me. But um, the guy did, I got the Mercedes now. I, you know, we got money. And I ain't trying to brag or nothing, but we got money in the bank. You know, your boy ain't hurting. Like, back, back when my, my, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> back me and my brother was having that talk, I was not doing so well. Money was not flowing. But nowadays, if I need, if we want to go out to eat at a steak restaurant, take the whole family, go pick mom up too, I ain't got to sweat it. Back in the day, I'd be like, man, I can't, you know, I'm going to have to miss a, I can't do it. I just couldn't do it. It was either pay the bills or go out to eat back in the day, and, and there's no other way around it. So now the bills are paid. The bills are paid up for five months, actually. Outbound power, everybody knows they don't play, and they'll cut your lights off in a second. They don't care if you're on an auction machine. They don't cut your lights off. Power will be slap cut off if you don't pay that bill. But we're paid up for a long time on them. So I, I just take them thousands of dollars at a time, so I ain't got to worry about it. Uh, the rent's paid. Everything's paid. So for up to at least five months. So I, that's a blessing. I've never been able to do that before, but thanks to Bear Wolf Apparel and being you auto sales, and I still have my nine to five job, um, just saving. Thanks to me being able to save my money and not just go crazy when I got a little bit of money. You know, yeah, I bought some cars here and there, but these are things we need. I gotta have a truck, so I might as well get the truck I wanted. Plus, I got a great deal on it. Outstanding deal. Everything I bought actually got a good deal on it. I mean, I sell and buy cars, so I'm gonna get a good deal. So, everything I got, I got a good deal on. Couldn't pass it up. We needed third row seats for the kids anyway. The old lady's gotta have a car. She's gotta go to work. So, everything we got, we actually need. And, yeah, we got luxury cars, but you you get what you pay for. I'm not going to, I don't want to go out and buy a Ford <laughs> and um, it'd be breaking down all the time. But I got the kids in the car. That ain't, that ain't a good look. So I'm going to get something I know is going to last and something's got a good reputation. Something that's built strong. When I drive this Mercedes, I can feel the craftsmanship in it. I can feel that it's sturdy, strong, made out of good material. So, and plus it's all wheel drive. If I got a sticky situation, I can actually press a button and raise it up if I need to go over some type of terrain or whatever. So, and like I say, it's third row with TVs in the back. I mean, it's a family wagon. Can't beat it. But anyway, with all that being said, never be afraid to be yourself because had I listened to all the naysayers and the haters, I would not have what I have today. I just wouldn't. It's impossible. Listening to them and feeding into the negativity it'll just throw you off your path and believe you me they're going to continue to be a hater they're going to continue being their self and they're going to get to where they're going but you listening to them that's only going to stunt your growth so to this day i, I have haters galore and it's sad and it, I, I find it funny and sad in the same token the people that are hating on me they usually don't have a side hustle or they don't have they have just one job and they may be miserable. I don't know what the deal is. Honestly, I honestly don't know. Really don't care what they got going on. That's just me. I worry about me and mine while they're worried about me. I'm just trying to keep my lane pushing. I'm trying to keep my money flowing. But yeah, I got people that just, I think it's so funny that I have shirts at stores. Like, what's, okay, I'm making money. Laugh it up. I'm, I'll laugh with you, but the only thing is, I'm laughing on my way to the bank. But yeah. Got a hater just going around laughing at my shirts at stores. Got haters to just think this is funny. I'm making a YouTube video that I'm getting paid for. I mean, if anybody's making fun of somebody for getting paid, got some serious 
deep mental issues that they need to sit down and deal with a psychiatrist because that's a true hater. Why would you hate on somebody for getting paid, especially when they have a family you know they got to provide for? I mean, make the most money you can. This is 2021, finna be 2022 in a couple of days. It's time to get on your grind, time to get on your hustle. Quit worrying about the next guy, the other guy. Worry about you. Get on your grind, man. This is it's time out for the hatred. I don't understand it. I never will. I'm glad I was raised better. But nevertheless, they're out there, man. They're everywhere. There's haters everywhere. It don't matter where you go. And like I say, if you just don't be afraid to be yourself, grind, hustle. And if you want to have your own YouTube channel one day that gets monetized, you can easily do it. Like I say, three and a half months. Once I figured out how, what I was doing wrong, it changed. And I'm your shortcut, so you don't have to figure it out. I just gave you the key ingredient. If Instagram is your thing, go to, set you up an Instagram page just for your channel. Share your content. You might want to show some other stuff every now and again, but share your content on your page that you have set up for, whether it be Instagram, Facebook. I don't know how Twitter, Twitter, whatever. I don't know how that works. TikTok. People are becoming millionaires off TikTok too. I don't understand TikTok. I set up an account and I got nothing. So I I, I made one video and I was like, I just ain't just it just ain't for me. Just like real estate. I know there's money in real estate, but it's not for 